We all love a challenging video game boss, but some of them push it a little too far. Here are 10 of the most unfair bosses in video games. We're looking forward to hearing you guys tell us just to get good in the comments. But anyway, let's get started off with number 10. Rufus at the Golden Saucer in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Now, there are a lot of tough fights in this game, a whole lot. Rebirth can be pretty merciless sometimes, but this one is one of the worst. The thing about this fight is that it isn't the hardest, but it is the one that'll make you say, seriously, or come on, uh, or something like that. Like What makes a fight unfair isn't how difficult it is, it's how frustrating it is. And believe us, this boss is frustrating. At this point in the game, you're already exhausted. You went through a gauntlet of fights, a boss fight, then another boss fight against the Turks, and now they're throwing a third fight at you out of nowhere. And even better, it's a one-on-one -on -one fight. The way these remake Final Fantasy VII games work, you're either going to get a cascading victory or a failure. The more mistakes you make, the harder combat gets, and if there's only one of you, then there's very little room for error. That's just the nature of the ATB system, kind of. Special abilities are limited, and healing is generally limited, especially when you're playing as just one character, and especially when that character is Cloud. The thing that really makes this fight hard is how difficult it is to tell what you're supposed to be doing. The trick here is that you need to counter hit him all the time, but the timing can be wonky, and if you screw it up, then he hits you with his own unblockable counter move. We don't know, like, I don't, like, just, maybe this guy is easier if you've really got your head in the game, but he just kept kicking our asses here. We had more trouble with this guy than the final boss, or even the bonus secret bosses. All those guys weren't too bad, but this guy makes us want to just pull our hair out. Once you get the hang of his attacks, he gets a lot more manageable, so he's maybe the easiest boss on this list, but still, man, what a pain. Next at number 9, let's talk Gears 5. Sometimes a really hard boss makes sense within the narrative of the game, and sometimes you get the Matriarch. Completely an out of nowhere fight that goes on way too long, has no checkpoints, and it's just an all around miserable slog of a boss. The thing is basically a souped up berserker, so expect a lot of charging, waiting around, and oh yeah, a whole lot of instant deaths. These types of like, you know, wait around, boss charges at you, then dodge and then shoot him in the back style fights are usually pretty been there, done that and kind of miserable in general. But this one finds a way to make it even worse by throwing in breakable ice spikes everywhere in a tiny arena where it's just easy to get stuck. Did I mention that this one goes on for too long? Well, we're gonna mention it twice because it seriously goes on for way too long. And most of it is pretty easy. It's only the final stretch where things get unbearably annoying. If they just threw in a checkpoint or two here, like it would be a little bit more tolerable, but they didn't, at least as far as we know. Now we respect the ambition here, trying to make a Souls boss in a Gears game, but this whole fight feels completely out of place with the rest of the game and is kind of a black mark on what is otherwise a solid campaign. Now over at number eight, the Godskin duo from Elden Ring. We've talked about these guys a lot. What needs to be said about these clowns? They're terrible. On their own, they're fine bosses, typical Souls stuff. But together, they're just intolerably rough. We cannot stand this fight, seriously. If they patched it out tomorrow, we'd be happy because it doesn't add too much to the game. I know people are gonna get mad, but listen, if it were just some random boss in an optional dungeon, then nobody would care, but it's not. You have to fight these guys. There's no avoiding them normally, and there's no reason for them to even be here. Like the boss fight sucks, it's just both guys again. Only now, they attack you at once. The 
big fat one is especially miserable because his attack has these wonky hitboxes. It feels like you should be able to dodge, but no, he just runs you over while his buddy stabs you in the back. Maybe if you could just kill one, it wouldn't be so bad, but no, they've got to make it as horrible as possible by making these guys respawn after a while. Yeah, I know there's an easy workaround to killing these guys. They're vulnerable to sleep. But who would have guessed that, if, especially when the game first released? Those items are mostly useless 99% of the time against bosses, but use them on these guys and they're out cold. The only way you'd know to do that was look up a strategy or fight them a dozen times and then give up and then literally try everything on the map. Either way, not our definition of fair, but at least there is a way to kill them easily. Next over at number seven, Samuel from Doom Eternal's uh, expansion, The Ancient Gods Part One. Back when it first came out, the difficulty of the first Doom Eternal DLC was absurd. The base game is hard enough, but the DLC cranked that difficulty to 11. And if you were playing on console, well, sorry, pal, this is gonna be really tough. The most infuriating of the new additions was this spirit enemy that would fly around and possess other enemies and make them stronger. The only way to kill them was with a specific weapon. Not so bad when they're by themselves, but now try and do that while you're getting shot at by two dozen murder demons, all which kill you in seconds, or even worse, try dealing with them while you're fighting a boss who has these lasers that do tons of damage that you have to destroy. Oh yeah, and the battlefield is constantly transforming. All of it is pure hell, pun intended, plain and simple. They've since patched the game to make the entire first DLC a little easier, including this boss, but it's still brutally hard. What makes it so unfair is all the gimmicks. He's constantly teleporting around, new enemies are spawning, these stupid spirit things are around, the lasers never go away, so you're always losing the war of attrition while you're wasting time hunting this guy down. In our humble opinion, this guy is way harder than even the Dark Lord himself, and that guy has an infuriating healing gimmick. At least he kind of plays fair, while this guy just throws as much BS at you as possible. Next over number six, let's talk Silver from Sonic the Hedgehog 06. Uh, boring, terrible, tedious. There are so many ways to describe the bosses in this game. They're pretty much all awful, every single one, but in our opinion, a lot of them are pretty easy or basic, even if they're janky or unfair a lot of the time. Some of the lamest fights in the game are rival battles where Blue Sonic, Black Sonic, and Gray Sonic awkwardly flail around each other and eventually one of them wins. Uh, most of these fights are painfully easy and the one against Silver is too, at least when it's not hair-pullingly frustrating. Does this sound fun to you? A boss that moves randomly and can instantly grab you at any time and do unavoidable damage. If you're anywhere near this guy, no matter what you're doing, he could just grab you out of the air and throw you with his psychic power. If you get caught, there's nothing you can do. How about this? Oh! It's this! It's no use! Tail! It's no use! This will end it! No! And sometimes he'll instantly chain one attack into another just as a treat. The fight is also incredibly inconsistent. Sometimes he'll absolutely decimate you and then like there, there's jack shit you can do in return. And sometimes he just glitches around and doesn't do anything. I mean, he glitches around all the time anyway, but like sometimes that glitching works in your favor. And uh, yeah, there are limited lives. So if you die to him too many times, then guess what? You've got to go back and replay the level again. Are you starting to see why people don't like this game? I'm definitely ranting, we gotta move on. Next over at number five, let's talk Jinpachi Mishima from Tekken. Now, there is a grand tradition of utterly unfair fighting game bosses. I mean, so many of them were designed not to be like a fun challenge, but just to get kids to waste quarters as they fruitlessly tried to beat these guys. You could do an entire list of just those, but screw it. Tekken 8 just came out recently, so let's talk about Jinpachi. In a series that has plenty of BS bosses, this guy may be the worst. He can interrupt your combos, his basic attacks do tons of damage off of your life bar, he's got multiple long range projectiles in a game that rarely has any moves like that, and worst of all, he can just stun you whenever he wants. 
You can block this move, but the timing is so tight that you'll rarely ever react in time. And he does it whenever, making it very difficult to predict. You're just pretty much relying on the stupidity of the AI to survive, because if this guy wants to kill you, then you're pretty much dead. He can attack out of your combo whenever he feels like it, stun, and then combo you into oblivion with his massively damaging attacks. Sometimes he goes easy on you and it becomes possible to win, but when the AI isn't asleep at the wheel, it's nearly impossible to win against this guy. Fight! Next over at number four, the Capra Demon from Dark Souls 1. Now, this is the perfect example of a boss fight that isn't hard, but it's just unfair. You encounter the Capra Demon pretty early on in the game. And if you're anything like us, uh, this is your first experience with it. You pass through the fog door, you step out into the arena, and then, oh, you're dead. Uh, what just happened? Sorry, pal, the Capra Demon appeared. Uh, this annoying as hell boss doesn't play fair at all. The arena he's in is small and awkward. He's got two demon dogs with him that can stun lock you in seconds too. Uh, the arena is so small that it can legitimately mess with your camera and dodging can be sticky and awkward with how the room is laid out. You know, it's just a cluster of a fight that never feels right even when you win. You just die and die and die until you figure out a way to survive those first few seconds. If you can manage that and clear out the dogs, then the remainder of the fight is a cinch, but surviving those few seconds is easier said than done. Well, unless you avoid this guy entirely and come back over leveled or cheese him by killing through the door. Uh, for this guy, no strategy is too cheesy because when a boss is this unfair, sometimes you just have to be unfair back, dude. Is it a poorly designed mess or like a brilliant subversion of what do you expect a boss to be? Who knows? It's just Dark Souls, man. Next over number three, we have Unalesca from Final Fantasy X. There's nothing worse than a turn-based RPG that has a boss pull out some BS trick out of nowhere and kill you instantly. Most RPGs have the good sense to give the player clues or at least telegraph the boss's tricks a little bit so that the fight doesn't just evolve into trial and error, but some developers just want to make us suffer. For the most part, I mean, Final Fantasy X isn't that kind of game. It's not that hard, but it goes right off the cliff into crazy town when you fight Unalesca near the end of the game. This is supposed to be a tough, climactic fight that's pretty standard until you get to the second form where it starts piling on status effects on your characters, including a zombie. The thing about zombie status is that, in general, you want it gone as fast as possible because if you've got it, then you can't use healing items. They hurt you instead. So of course, your first instinct is to remove that status effect, but nope. You done screwed up because when she transitions into her third form, she automatically casts a spell Mega Death, which just automatically kills everyone who's not affected by zombie. It sounds cool, but it sucks. Seriously. There are other ways to avoid death, but most people playing this game for the first time just won't be aware of that. And also, this spell comes out of nowhere with like no warning, so it doesn't even matter. Okay, that sucks, but at least you can reload your save right outside the boss arena, right? Well, yeah, you don't have to run through any dungeon, but you still have to sit through around 14 minutes of what was unskippable cutscenes. Again. You're just sitting there dealing with the cutscenes, mashing buttons over something you've seen a million times, just hoping to skip it. Uh, you still can't do it in the remasters. There's just no escaping. Even if there is no cutscenes, that's like just more pain, the fight would still be BS for that one attack. Because seriously, if you need a guide to not die in an easy RPG like this, then they're doing something wrong. Next over at number two, Sans, the genocide route in Undertale. Now here's the thing about this fight. It's maybe the most intentionally unfair fight ever made. That's the whole point, that it's deliberately making things as annoying and frustrating as possible so that you, the player, will give up. That's the in-game reason, because you're fighting a guy who knows that when you lose, you'll just load the game and try again and has the unique dialogue when you do. So instead of putting up a fair fight, they just try just about every dirty trick possible. He attacks first, 
which no other enemy in the game does. You cannot hit him. It's literally impossible. He'll attack you while you're on the menu, and none of his attacks have invincibility frames. All of this stuff just flies in the face of what is normally possible in the game. It's breaking all the rules to make this fight as difficult as possible. So in that regard, it's an incredibly unfair fight compared to the rest of the game. But the whole thing is so deliberately designed that it kind of feels a little off putting it on a list like this. You know, maybe if this fight was literally impossible, like there was actually no way to win at all, all, then yeah, that'd be unfair as hell, but you can beat it. They did make it possible. It's just extremely challenging to pull it off. Now down at number one, the mysterious figure from Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep. Now, if Sans is unfair in a good way, then this boss uh, just isn't. <laughs> uh, now sure, the expectation is there for a super secret bonus boss to be hard, but this guy doesn't just turn the difficulty dial up, they actually like break it off. This guy has every annoying boss trick in the book and then some. It, like, it basically counters everything you throw at it and is only vulnerable to a few very specific actions. And when we say specific, we mean like two. All the standard combat mechanics that you've been using the entire game up to this point are pretty much worthless. Don't even bother with them because they don't work. Now combine that with attacks that are all but unavoidable and visually confusing that can also drop your health down to one with a single hit and you're looking at a bad time. Oh yeah, and he can use those devastating attacks back to back whenever he wants. And worst of all, he can turn invisible, so you can't lock on, leaving you at the mercy of the terrible camera to see what's going on. Most of the time, you can't see what's going on. Now imagine if they made like an Elden Ring millennia where like you can only use basic attacks and sometimes you just cannot target them. That's the mysterious figure here. They're one of the most brutally unfair bosses of all time. Those are 10 games, but we do have a bonus one for you. It's Castlevania, Dracula X, it's Dracula's throne room from hell. Now it's your standard Dracula fight, but you have to fight him on top of a bunch of tiny pillars. Basically one wrong move or one hit from Dracula will knock back you into oblivion and it is pure torture. Seriously, you take a game that already has somewhat awkward controls and stiff platforming and then you make us do this? It's utterly absurd and only made possible by the fact that there is a way to cheese it by standing in the corner. It's hardly made the fight fair though. It pretty much is like the only way to make a boss fight possible to use this trick. But yeah, that certainly ain't fair. But again, those are 10 or so games of unfair boss fights. There are so many more out there. A lot of you guys are gonna comment and say, no, these bosses are easy, you're wrong. Sure, let us have it. But we also wanna hear some of your picks for unfair bosses. There's definitely a good conversation to be had here. So let us know in the comments. And if you like this video and you like talking games with us every day, clicking the like button's all you gotta do. It really helps us out. And if you're new, consider subscribing, maybe hitting that notification bell because we put out videos every single day. But as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.